Ohio. But how is it that you could spend 20 years of your life, John, writing about geology um, at a time that you were already extremely well established? Well, <laughs> um, I've been asked that question before and I came prepared with something I'd like to read that I think may answer it. And there's a, a little preamble to it, if you'll bear with me, uh, because I think this paragraph would, uh, would be helpful in answering that question. And the beginnings of it is that when I was in college, as noted, I, I majored in English. And in, in college and in high school, I took various courses in physics, chemistry, biology, and geology, but, but only to satisfy idle curiosity or, or distributional requirements. Um, so what would lead someone like that to spend 20 years traveling with geologists? Uh, writing about them, about the science. Like all writing, writing about geology is mind fracturing, masochistic, self enslaved labor. <laughs> and that description intensifies when the medium is rock. <laughs> so, how to explain this behavior? Why would someone out of one culture try to make prose out of the other? Why would someone who majored in English choose to write about rocks? Why would a person who works for something called a humanities council and teaches a course called Humanistic Studies 440 undertake to write about geology? I think that those questions are answered by one paragraph in Annals of the Former World uh, and in all its 750 pages, this one paragraph, and I'd like to read that paragraph at the moment. I used to sit in class and listen to the terms come floating down the room like paper airplanes. Geology was called a descriptive science, and with its pitted outwash plains and drowned rivers, its hanging tributaries and starved coastlines, it was nothing if not descriptive. It was a fountain of metaphor of isostatic adjustments and degraded channels, of angular unconformities and shifting divides, of rootless mountains and bitter lakes. Streams eroded headward, digging from two sides into mountain or hill, avidly struggling toward each other until the divide between them broke down, and the two rivers that did the breaking now became confluent, one yielding to the other, giving up its direction of flow and going the opposite way, to become a single stream, stream capture. In the Sierra Nevada, the Yuba had captured the bear. The macho member of a formation in New Mexico was derived in large part from the solution and collapse of another formation. There was fatigued rock and incompetent rock and inequigranular fabric in rock. If you bent or folded rock, the inside of the curve was in a state of compression. The outside of the curve was under great tension, and somewhere in the middle was the surface of no strain. Thrust fault, reverse fault, normal fault, the two sides were active in every fault. The inclination of a slope on which boulders would stay put was the angle of repose. There seemed indeed to be more than a little of the humanities in this subject. Geologists communicated in English, and they could name things in a manner that sent shivers through the bones. They had roof pendants in their discordant batholiths, mosaic conglomerates in desert pavement. There was ultra-basic deep ocean mottled green and black rock or serpentine. There was the slip face of the Barkan dune. In 1841, a paleontologist had decided that the big creatures of the Mesozoic were fearfully great lizards and had therefore named them dinosaurs. There were festooned crossbeds and limestone sinks, pillow lavas and petrified trees, incised meanders and defeated streams. There were dike swarms and slicken sides, explosion pits, volcanic bombs, pulsating glaciers, 
Hogback's Radiolarian Ooze. <laughs> there was almost enough resonance in some terms to stir the adolescent groin. <laughs> The, the swelling up of mountains was described as an orogeny. <laughs> the antler orogeny, the Avalonian orogeny, the Taconic, Acadian, Alleghenian orogenies, the Laramide orogeny. The center of the United States had had a dull geologic history, nothing much being accumulated, nothing much being eroded away. It was just sitting there conservatively. <laughs> the East had once been radical, had been unstable, reformist, revolutionary in the Paleozoic pulses of three or four orogenies. Now, for the last 150 million years, the East had been stable and conservative. The far out stuff was in the far west of the country. Wild, weirds, a leather jacket geology in mirrored shades with its welded tufts and Franciscan melange, internally deformed, complex beyond analysis, its strike slip faults and falling buildings, its boiling springs and fresh volcanics, its extensional disassembling of the earth. <laughs>